Okay, meeting is launched. Everyone, um, welcome to day three. Good job, Sloan, uh, for the recording. Um, and welcome to the returning session, uh, the returning attendees talk session, how to lead just about any internal project successfully. So um, I, before I turn it over to Sloan, my name is Jennifer Smith. I'm CSDA Professional Development Coordinator. And I just want to say one more time, thank you so much for being a part of this virtual conference and uh, for participating. You guys have been just wonderful throughout this and then lead up to it. So thank you for all of that. Um, I do want to give you guys a couple of reminders. The first thing is, um, I know many of you have found the wall. If you are having any issues, we know, I know that we have some issues with certificates that we are working on. So um, keep an eye out for um, some follow up from me um, after the conference with uh, your certificates. If you popped it on there, or I'm going to put my email address is jenniferss at csda.net in case you don't know it. And you can always email me if you have any issues um, getting your certificates or with anything with the conference app. I'll be happy to assist you. Secondly, um, we did add a bonus session for you guys, um, especially for the returning attendees, um, a legal session, because we did have a, a Q&A session with, some, with the first time attendees earlier in the week, but we added another session for both first time and returning attendees from one o'clock to two o'clock, ask the legal eagles with our friends at Liebert Cassidy. Um, so if, um, so you want to make sure to join that Zoom session from one to two, bring your legal questions and we'll get as many answered live as we possibly can and any others we will get answered and posted out into the, um, into the conference community. So with that, I am going to hand it off to my friend Sloan. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I'm going to share my screen here. The 18th is not. Hopefully, I'll move all my stuff around here. So, can you all see my screen okay? Yep. Awesome. Okay, cool. I'm trying to figure out like, where I want to put you all so I can see you while I'm, <laughs> so I can see you near the slides. Um, all right. So, a couple of things, just a little bit. Being, um, I am going to be admitting people as I go, so sorry for a little bit of distraction there. Um, you are welcome to unmute if you feel like talking. I'm happy to hear voices. I'm happy to see faces. It's so nice to not have to pre-record this one. Um, this talk is very near and dear to my heart, but it's the first time I've given it. It's the first time I put it together. and. So I'm also a little bit nervous about it. So if, if you give me feedback as we go, I'd really appreciate it. I'd like to hear any of your thoughts as we go. Um, you can just chime in, you can chat. I am watching the chat, but I'm also, of course, looking at all this other stuff going on too. So if I don't chat right away, be patient with me. <laughs> Thanks for the thumbs up. See any sort of feedback, I'll take anything, anything. All right, so let me get going. Um, this is gonna be interactive in the sense that I've got some exercises we're gonna do together and um, and we'll get some videos to watch. There's a lot of stuff going on. So hopefully this will all work. So I know a lot of you probably have heard this so many times. So I used to be a firefighter. I love special districts. I love local government. Um, and so when I couldn't do firefighting anymore because of some injuries, um, this kind of made sense because I'd always done websites. So that's why we work only with special districts because I just love them so much. Um, but the why for this talk is more specific than that. So. When I first started working with Mac, my co-founder, we would build websites for just about anybody. And our most challenging customers were always the universities of all things. I don't know why, but the universities were always just a pain in my backside. And I would try to run these projects and I went into one of the UC Davis schools and I'm trying to run a discovery conversation. And I have all these warring factions, different departments. Um, I had people actually saying, well, our department should be in the middle at the top because we bring in more grants than anybody else. And I'm like, how does that make any sense whatsoever, right? Nobody can find anything on this website. 
the project was just miserable. We got the site built. They were happy with it at first, or at least some of them were. Six months later, they asked us to redesign the entire thing because nobody could find anything and the public was complaining. <laughs> so a lot of the exercises we're gonna do today and some of the videos I'm gonna share are things that I put together and pulled together um, in trying to solve that sort of a problem. When you're trying to lead a project, got people warring over things that make no sense, having the wrong conversations, but not everybody pulling together, trying to make a successful project because they're, you know, everybody's got their agendas. So that's, that's my why for this. And um, I'll, I'll tell you how that all worked out a little, a little bit later. So I'm gonna play this and just somebody holler if you can't hear it. The why was born out of pain. Um, it was never an academic or commercial exercise. It was born out of a time in my life, many years ago, 10 years ago, where I had lost my passion for what I was doing. I owned my own small business. I was living the American dream. Superficially, my life was fantastic. And yet, I didn't want to wake up and do it again. And I was embarrassed by that. You know, who am I to complain about my life? My life seemed perfect, and yet I hated it. And so I kept it to myself. Every ounce of my being, every, all the energy that I had was invested in pretending that I was happier, more successful, and more in control than I felt. And it was debilitating, quite frankly. Um, strange things start to happen when you put yourself in that cycle and the stress starts to build. You start to become paranoid. So for example, I was convinced that um, my employees hated me. I didn't go out much, and it was really, it was really a bad time. And it wasn't until a friend of mine came to me concerned that I wasn't acting myself and basically offered me nothing more than moral support. Whatever you need, I got your back, I'm worried about you. And it was that simple act that gave me the courage to face my own problem. And it was that simple act that gave me the courage to seek out a solution, to go back to the way I used to feel, to be passionate about something again. There was a confluence of events. And I made this discovery that Every single organization on the planet, even our own careers, always function on the same three levels. What we do, how we do it, and why we do it. And it was based on the biology of human decision-making. It wasn't some highfalutin management theory. It was based on brain stuff. And I realized I knew what I did and was good at it. And I knew how I did it. I could tell you what was different or special about the way I did things. But I couldn't tell you why I was doing it. That was the missing piece. You have to have all three. I became obsessed with this thing called the why. I figured out how to find my why and it restored my passion to levels I had never experienced before. And more importantly, I figured out how to help others find theirs. And I did what anyone would do. When you discover something beautiful, you share it with your friends. And my friends started making crazy life changes themselves. And they started finding happiness and passion that they'd never experienced before. It was me solving my own problem that happened to help others solve it for them too. <clears throat> and people just kept inviting me and I just kept saying yes. I was making huge decisions that were really easy to make. Like I shut down my office and started over again because I realized the business I had built was so inconsistent with my why. All my friends thought I went out of business and they were worried about me. It was the easiest, easiest decision I ever made. In other words, when you know your why, the filter is clear. It's not like there are options. The option is obvious. There's only one option. Share, give, inspire. And everything that I've achieved, any success that I've enjoyed, has all been 100% because of the gracious, just amazing generosity of people around me. Uh, my friends, <coughs> and my colleagues, um, um, people who just believe what I believe, they're the ones who either introduced me to others or took a risk or said, let me try that, or bought a book or watched a TED talk, or more importantly, sent it to somebody else because they thought they would be inspired by it. For all of the th things that I've done over the past decade, I still feel like I'm at the beginning. I have been saying it for 10 years when everybody says to me, you know, congratulations on X, Y, or Z. My answer is always the same, tip of the iceberg. And I think that's what keeps me inspired, which is 
For me, it's a journey. I'm on the right path. I'm walking past the right mile markers. In other words, I know I'm making progress to the vision that I have to build this world in which the vast majority of people wake up every single morning, inspired to go to work, feel safe when they're there, returning home at the end of the day, fulfilled by the work that they do. When I started the race, I ran by myself. And it's lonely, lonely, lonely. And now I got like a, I got like a thousand people to the left and a thousand people to the right, and a thousand people behind me. And I look around, I'm like, yep, we're gonna change the world. We're gonna change the world. There you go. I love you. I love this video so much. <laughs> Next. Let's see how awkward the end. Okay, hold on, I gotta admit somebody. So have some of you, are you familiar with Simon Sinek? <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Um, I, I just love him and Start With Why was one of the books that really helped me find my way to creating Streamline because we were building websites for just anybody. And it was fine in the sense that I love solving problems, like figuring out how to have a meeting that was better than the one I mentioned earlier. Um, I liked the leadership role. I liked managing people. I liked training people. But there was no real passion for what I was doing until I pivoted inside of the company and built Streamline because I love special districts so much. So he's just really inspiring to me. So here's what we're going to go over today. And for those of you who um, have joined a little bit late, you're welcome to unmute, be on camera, don't be on camera, use the chat, whatever you're comfortable doing. So we're going to talk a little bit about, I will go into some project management tools towards the end just because I've used so many of them. But this is not really a talk about project management. And so we're going to go over the difference between project leadership and project management to start. And then we're going to talk about ways of building internal support and um, some tools you can use for that. Then we're going to go into brainstorming and the rules of brainstorming and the process you can go through to really get the best ideas in the room. Then we're going to move to the public support, right? So this is going to be applicable, like whether or not you're doing something that does affect the public or, you know, if not, you're just doing an internal project. Either way, I wanted to make sure to just close that loop. And then some of the tools that you can use, and then we'll talk about some that you maybe already use. I hope you'll all pitch in and share. Um, and then, of course, we'll recap in case I put you to sleep. <laughs> If I do put you to sleep, make sure you're muted because I don't want to hear you snoring. Okay, so here's how project leadership is different than project management. They really are two different things and it's subtle, but they're different. Oh, oh hold on, I got a newbie. Come on in, Amy. Okay, so project management, or stops working every time I have to admit somebody, project management gets things done, right? This is like checklists, things like that. Project leadership makes change happen. So two very different approaches, and it is kind of subtle. But here are some of the things that kind of identify project management. Project plan that's going to be directing actions. Processes, systems, procedures, right? So this is when I talked about checklists, things like that. Communicates the project plan, knows the plan, does things right. And people do what a project manager asks because it's their job to do so. So they know that this person is managing the project, they're going to get told what to do, and then they're going to go do their job, right? So some differences between that and project leadership. So this is much more vision and strategy and inspiration, right? This is just a bigger view. And it doesn't mean that you won't move from leadership into project management at some point because you may it may be your project to run once you've led the charge on getting somebody to buy into it leadership focuses much more on people and their commitments and ideas versus like just processes to get things done paints a vision of the future so like i said very much visionary big picture thinking oh no clicker died all together and does the right things. So it's a little different, right? And it does things right, but it's doing the right things. And people do what a project leader asks because they want to, right? So this is when it comes back to the inspiration and the way you feel, like if you see Simon Sinek give a talk, right? And suddenly you're like, yes, you know, you're all in. 
a couple of other things. This is, I love this analogy. So this is like the school bus, right? So you get on the bus because you have to, because the bus is the only way you know to get to school or to wherever you need to go. And so, you know, the driver is skilled and, you know, they take care of you. And if it breaks down, they'll figure out what to do about it. It's not your problem. <laughs> I love the purple bus analogy. I didn't make this up, by the way. People hear the driver of the purple bus talking about the destination and they're so excited. They just want to go, right? It's not like I have a purple bus. It's like, oh, I get to get on the purple bus. The driver is skilled, but if the bus breaks down, everybody's out there helping, right? Everybody's on board. Everybody feels like they're part of it. So that's some of the differences between project management and project leadership. So any questions on that before we move on? Any thoughts? Hmm? Cricket? I love the clarity. That's really easy to understand. Oh, good, good, because it seems a little subtle to me sometimes, but especially when I'm in it, you know, I'm like, am I managing, am I leading? And often I think I'm leading and I find I'm really <laughs> managing more. So now building internal support. So this is the stuff that was inspired by Simon Sinek. So back to that project I told you about. Um, has anyone here seen the Start With Why video itself? Nancy, anybody else? Okay, well, bear with me. It's not very long. This, this is a short clip. Let me know if you can't hear it. And Nancy, you can get a cup of coffee if you want. <laughs> I call it the golden circle. Why, how, what? This little idea explains why some organizations and some leaders are able to inspire where others aren't. Let me define the terms really quickly. Every single person, every single organization on the planet knows what they do 100%. Some know how they do it, whether you call it your differentiating value proposition or your proprietary process or your USP. But very, very few people or organizations know why they do what they do. And by why, I don't mean to make a profit. That's a result. It's always a result. By why, I mean what's your purpose? What's your cause? What's your belief? Why does your organization exist? Why do you get out of bed in the morning? And why should anyone care? Well, as a result, the way we think, the way we act, the way we communicate is from the outside in. It's obvious. We go from the clearest thing to the fuzziest thing. But the inspired leaders and the inspire or inspired organizations regardless of their size, regardless of their industry, all think, act, and communicate from the inside out. Let me give you an example. I use Apple because they're easy to understand and everybody gets it. If Apple were like everyone else, a marketing message from them might sound like this. We make great computers. They're beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. Wanna buy one? Meh. And that's how most of us communicate. That's how most marketing is done. That's how most sales is done. And that's how most of us communicate interpersonally. We say what we do. We say how we're different or how we better. And we expect some sort of behavior, a purchase, a vote, something like that. Here's our new law firm. Uh, we have the best lawyers with the biggest clients. We have, you know, we always perform for our clients, do business with us. Here's our new car. It gets great gas mileage. It has, you know, leather seats. Buy our car. But it's uninspiring. Here's how Apple actually communicates. Everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. The way we challenge the status quo is by making our products beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. We just happen to make great computers. Want to buy one? Totally different, right? You're ready to buy a computer from me. All I did was reverse the order of the information. What it proves to us is that people don't buy what you do, people buy why you do it. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. This explains why every single person in this room is perfectly comfortable buying a computer from Apple. But we're also perfectly comfortable buying an MP3 player from Apple, or a phone from Apple, or a DVR from Apple. 
But as I said before, Apple's just a computer company. There's nothing that distinguishes them structurally from any of their competitors. Their competitors are all equally qualified to make all of these products. In fact, they tried. A few years ago, Gateway came out with flat screen TVs. Does anybody remember They're that? They're qualified to make flat screen TVs. They've been making mm. flat screen monitors for years. Nobody bought one. I bought one. So I was the only one. I was about the only one. And Dell came out with MP3 players and PDAs. And they make great quality products, and they can make perfectly well-designed products, and nobody bought one. <laughs> In fact, talking about it now, we can't even imagine buying an MP3 player from Dell. Why would you buy an MP3 player from a computer company? But we do it every day. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. When we communicate from the outside in, yes, people can understand vast amounts of complicated information like features and benefits and facts and figures. It just doesn't drive behavior. When we communicate from the inside out, we're talking directly to the part of the brain that controls behavior, and then we allow people to rationalize it with the tangible things we say and do. This is where gut decisions come from. You know, sometimes you can give somebody all the facts and your figures, and they say, I know what all the facts and details say, but it just doesn't feel right. Why would we use that verb? It doesn't feel right. Because the part of the brain that controls decision making doesn't control language. And the best we can muster up is, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. Or sometimes you say you're leading with your heart or you're leading with your soul. Well, I hate to break it to you, those aren't <coughs> the other body parts controlling your behavior. It's all happening here in your limbic brain, the part of the brain that controls decision making and not language. But if you don't know why you do what you do, and people respond to why you do what you do, then how will anybody how will you ever get people to, 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 to vote for you or buy something from you, or more importantly, be loyal? Hmm. All right, thank you for bearing with me through that. Um, so if you all, you're on a computer, obviously, can you go to that URL? We've got some exercises we're gonna do together, some why exercises. So it's getstreamline.com forward slash lead, L-E-A-D, and go grab those real quick. Um, we're gonna do some of these for fun today, but these are really designed to be done with your project team or your staff or your board or whomever is part of getting on board with the project that you're gonna be doing. Um, but we'll do it together today a little bit. I hope that you will play along. Um, they're fillable PDFs or you can just print them or you can just have them open and look at them. The other thing that you can do too, if, if you don't feel like bothering with all of that, it's like just too much to deal with right now because you know I have multiple screens and all that kind of stuff, you may not. Um, you also can just like throw your ideas into the chat. Um, for those of you, if any of you have been in my storytelling webinar series, I talk about this a little bit in there too. And we had people just throwing stuff in chat and it was great. So whatever you're most comfortable with, I can't believe my dogs haven't barked yet. I'm sure it'll happen. I almost put a picture of them in my in my presentation so you would know who they were if you heard them. All right, so hopefully you've got those if you want them. Um, I'll share the URL with you again at the end just for all the resources that are there. And um, this all the resources from this talk. So this is what we're gonna go through in this next section, exploring your why. Oh, hey, Dwayne, <laughs> I miss you guys so much. Thanks, Nancy. Um, so exploring your organization's noble cause, you know, like special districts are really inspiring and Amy pension systems are really inspiring, right? I mean, what you all do for the world is really inspiring. So we want to do that. And then, hold well on, got a new person. Um, and then, sorry, it's going to click through. Finding your four why's, and, and we'll talk about that. It's gonna be your personal why and the project why. And then we're gonna go through the process of creating a few user stories. So this is the system that I designed myself after getting inspired by Simon Sinek. And I would have all of my, oh, thank you so much. April, you are a champ. I didn't even think to do that. Thank God somebody knows what they're doing around here. Um, so this is the process that I created after that awful project I told you about at the beginning where we built a website that everybody hated just because they told us how to do it and I couldn't control the conversation. So this is where we're gonna work on this a little bit. So this is the noble cause and people sometimes call this a mission statement, but I don't really like to do that because mission statements to me don't feel very alive. 
and they often don't feel very personal either. So this is what we're gonna do. And we're gonna have 90 seconds to do it. Write down your organization's why. I want, I wanna know, I want you to get in touch with your cause. And, and I'm talking big noble cause. Um, like, here's an example. We did this with Sacramento Sanitary District, who's one of our digital deployment clients. And I did this exercise with them. And the way I always do this, and hopefully you will too, and you'll take my word for it. It's awkward, but it's important. People do the exercises and then you bring them together. You don't let them know ahead of time. But once you've got them in the room, they have to read their own statements. And when you do that, everybody gets really in touch with why you're all coming together for this project. You just can't go back on your agendas and small little needs when you're really in touch with this why. So I did this with the sanitary district and the one of the ladies who was like, I don't know what her real title was, but she ran like, she answered the phone. She was the first person customer service. And she said something, um, something to the effect of, listen, when people call us, they are at their very most stressed. We exist to take the fear away, to make sure that they're taken care of and to protect the environment. Like it was just really, really inspiring. And we get around to the GM and her statement was, we keep the poop in the pipes, which I thought was also brilliant, you know, but maybe not quite as inspiring. So let's spend a little time doing this. I'm gonna play some music. We'll do 90 seconds. Let me know if that's too loud. Okay, so what else did you come up with? I'm looking here in the chat. This is great. Oh, I love that, Amy. So what else? Anybody feeling brave? You want to unmute and just holler or you can just throw it in chat either way. So, oh good, Domini, protect the citizens of our district and take wastewater and turn it into the cleanest possible water to be used in other capacities. I love it. It's dedicated to the success of the environment. So much different than keeping the poop in the pipes, which is also, of course, very important. You know, that's an important thing. Um, but it's just a very different kind of feel. Anyone else want to share? Oh, good. Provide lifetime benefits to members of the Alameda County Retirement System. We exist to provide quality water to support a vibrant community in agriculture. Uh, safe, reliable water for our customers. Water is so important right now. Well, it's going to just keep becoming more important. Okay, anybody else? Oh, good. Oh, connect people to each other and drive the regional economy. Okay, I love that. To protect the public health from viruses that mosquitoes and other vectors can transmit. Love my mosquito districts. Exists to provide fire suppression, prevention, and emergency medical and rescue services to residents and visitors. Excellence in public service with heart and soul as if we live in your neighborhood. I love this. We want to be leaders. We want to offer good service and seek connection with the community. We want to preserve our environment. I love this. So um, you guys, you guys are great at this. Um, so our next step, and, and this is hard because, well, it's not hard. I, I make it hard because I know it makes people feel uncomfortable, but it's not hard. So our next step is going to be our personal why. So 
why do you do what you do? And why did you come to work for your organization? Like why you and why there? And, you know, if it's a case of, well, I needed a job, which is fine. I mean, we all need jobs. Um, since you've been there, you can you can come up with something that like connects you to the, the purpose of the organization itself. So this one will just do 60 seconds. This is awesome. I think everybody can probably see the chat, right? You can all see the chat. Do we have anybody? I've got one phone caller, but I'm assuming you're also on a computer. Put part of a team, encourage and support others. This is great. Make the staff successful. <laughs> Serving the public fills me with happiness. That's awesome. Oh, Dominique, that's great. Okay, this is good. This is good. Okay, and you, can, you guys can all see those, right? So you can imagine that if you're sitting, so what happened with this university department or whatever you call it, the school um, at UC Davis, when we did the project the second time, I had developed all of these tools and I made them do them ahead of time, but I didn't tell them they were gonna have to share. So when we get and everybody starts sharing with one another in the group setting, they find out they have to read them out loud. And these are people who are really just kind of scrapping all the time. And the, the biggest troublemakers, their, their personal whys were, and, and the, actually the mission of the, the organization too, were just lofty. You know, we're, we're teaching the next generation of teachers that will affect children for decades to come. And they were so like these big, and you just can't go from that to, and we need to be the only ones that's in the navigation on the homepage. You know, it's just like, it just doesn't, they, those conversations don't happen together, right? But there's still a couple other exercises that we can do. So I lost my focus again. So your project why? And now this one, I'm just gonna click through real quick. You can do this right now or not, but I think that this is an important step if you really are trying to lead a project successfully. This is a very important step. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, so just going back to the why with that exercise between um, the organization and the personal why in that example how did how did you connect that for the people in the room did you just that just sat there i'm just wondering how you made that connection between like how you're you know the connection to the website whereas you know the previous meetings they they wanted to be the first you know the right first image how, how did you make that connection for right people? well the, the funny thing is is when you got a group of people that are kind of cantankerous and but then they read their personal why statements, especially suddenly they just have so much more empathy for one another. They're like, we're here for the same thing. Like we both want X, you know, we both came to work here because we want to be successful. We want to serve the public. We want to do whatever we want to do. And so it really is kind of a natural progression when you're doing this and everybody's reading them together. Cause you know, you could have, this group was 20 people, I think, which is just way too big of a group to make any kind of decisions. But the differences between my first meeting with them and then the meeting when we went through this process, just night and day, night and day. So it's just a little bit kind of, it's almost, it almost forces people to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's really forcing you to like, like tune into your heart and then share that with other people, which it's just once you've done that, it's really hard to then fight over nitpicky stuff. <laughs> okay. So yeah. It's, it's like a great warm up. 
way yeah. to put everybody in the right mindset of what we're here to accomplish and see exactly. kind of the, the unity of purpose. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Exactly. Because then it's not fighting over, you're not talking about who gets the budget or any of that, right? It's just like, there's a why for this. And when you do that for your project as well, if you have a project in mind, um, then, then it gets everybody oriented. If they all have their own like why, they have to kind of come up with a why for the project. As the project leader, you may be the only one who does this, this piece, right? Just, but you just want to make sure you really get in touch with your why for wanting to do this project and get buy-in from people. So you guys want to work on a project why just for a few minutes or a minute? Yes, no? Okay, 60 seconds. Okay, so how are we feeling? Cool, I'm looking at chat now. Do something for the community and do a Halloween drive through I love that. I love that. Yeah, Halloween has always been one of my favorite, favorite times. And my son's 23 now, so it's not nearly as much fun as it was when he was little. Um, one year I made him, so I, I bought him a Buzz Lightyear costume. You remember Buzz Lightyear? And it came with these little tiny wings on the back. And I was like, oh, that's not good enough. So I went and got um, that foam core stuff and I made him some nice big wings and he spent the entire Halloween trying to like go sideways through everybody's gate. It was ridiculous. Puts order in the district. Your meeting's accessible to all. I like that. Build trust and create a more peaceful and collaborative environment. Jeez, I love that. You guys, you guys are really good at this. Um, so here's the best thing to do once you have a project in mind. This, these are called user stories. Has anybody ever done user stories before? No, I, it's something, and, and I'm not surprised, it's something, um, oh God, I love that. Want to bring the community and families away from technology and enjoy each other in the fresh air. Okay, um, cool. So here's what user stories are. They're used very frequently when you're building software. When we were building Streamline, we did a lot of user stories. And the reason that this is good is because instead of thinking about your project now from your why, this is how you get into the people who will benefit by, from your project's why. This is what we're thinking about there. So this is the format that they go in. As a blank, I want so that so in, in um, Nancy, your example that you just did for your project why, as a parent of two toddlers, I want clean, safe parks so that I don't lose my mind trying to homeschool. I need to get the heck out of my house, right? I mean, those are kind of user stories, like really think about your people. So here are just a couple of examples that you can look at. They can be for all kinds of things, right? It doesn't have to be like maybe like doing this just gets, everything sounds more inspiring, right? We need to buy tablets for our board members. Okay, well, why? Well, as a board member, I want a tablet so that I don't have to use my personal device or maybe I don't have one, right? So these are stories. And if you would do me the honor of just writing one or two, just one or two user stories on anybody who, you would, who would benefit by your project. So if it's a Halloween drive-through thing, thinking about the parents and the children and even the people at your district maybe who would be so happy to do it. So 60 seconds.
Okay, so what'd we come up with? Anybody have any you wanna share? You can unmute if you want, or you can type them in, whatever is easier. Okay, I like that. Very nice. As a senior, I want lighted safe walk paths so I can exercise safely. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I'm doing this webinar series just finished on storytelling for special districts. So trying to really encourage you all to kind of get to your why and then tell it and share it with the world. And it's so funny. I want to, this is, was not planned, um, but in a minute, I'm going to share part of my why with you all. As a member of the special district, I want to empower the employees and the citizens to actively participate in their community so that it was well managed for the others that come after us. I love that. As a board clerk, I want to increase the knowledge of the directors so that they can better serve our community. <laughs> a very noble cause. A very noble cause. So I am going to share a different screen real quick. I'm going to share this real quick. Just because if you weren't in my storytelling webinar series, you haven't seen this slide and this might surprise you. Okay, hold on, I'm reading my leader on what resources I need to be readily available so I can do my job better and help develop my staff. Nice, nice. As a person in the community, I wanna see people laugh and smile again. <laughs> ah, me too, me too. All right, so take a look at this slide real quick. So there are 50 states in the United States, right? There's only one of ours. So there's one California. There are almost 20,000 municipalities, right? Cities, townships, all of that sort of stuff. Um, I was so surprised how many of them, almost 15,000 of those have populations under 5,000. We have 482 in California, right? There are 38,000 special districts in the United States, 38,000. And if you include the dependent ones, there are 3,400 in California. So that's part of my why, because there wasn't anybody else taking care of you all. So that's part of why we do what we do. Uh, da -da -da, catching up. I really like these. See, these are great. So you can imagine that once you've gone through this whole process, like I keep saying, but it's a little bit hard to write user stories that are looking at how this is going to benefit people and then to come back with your own agenda that doesn't fulfill that, right? So, okay, I got to keep moving here. You guys really don't want to stay with me until noon, do you? <laughs> I hear my tortoise though. So if we get done early, you could at least visit with Dosti. All right, share with your team. This really is the important part. And when I hired somebody to do, when I used to do that kind of leadership stuff for digital deployment, our parent company, I trained another employee to take over for me and he would do everything except make them share in the meeting. He was too uncomfortable to do that. And he had so many problems because if people aren't sharing these things, then they're not seeing that they're actually all on the same side. So this is really the important part. And I know people can feel shy and it can feel hard, but this is what leadership is all about, right? So now we're gonna go into brainstorming ideas. I love brainstorming, but there's a part of my brain that also likes to like figure out why things won't work. <laughs> so we've gotten really good at trying to really use formal brainstorming rules and I've got some just some great resources in here. So. They talk about divergent and convergent thinking. So divergent is going really wide. Um, if you've ever been in a really true, good, truly good um, brainstorming session, sorry, I'm trying to keep an eye on chat too. Um, if you've been to a really good brainstorming session, you'll see, I mean, all these crazy ideas come out, right? But that's how you get your left brain to just quiet down. Like it's so funny, Mac is so good at this. He'll come into a brainstorming session and we were trying to figure out a name for portal or intranet software. And he's throwing out stuff like macaroon and you know, just cookie names and that food stuff. And but then it just gets the ball rolling, right? And then everybody's like, da 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 da. And you may do this multiple times, you know. So then you converge. That's when you take kind of find things that are alike, narrow the focus, refine your ideas. And I just had to put this in here because I love this book so much. As a matter of fact, I didn't really have to put it in here because it's it's right on my desk and it's all beat up and I love it. Um, if you guys, <laughs> the thing I like about this, if any of you on this have a hard time quieting down your left side of your brain when you're trying to be creative, this is an amazing book. Um, 
right brainers. I don't know if we're going to rule the future or not. That's not necessarily true. And that's not actually his take in the book. It's about a balance between the two, right? And having setting the stage for the right times to be using one side or the other. So I love that book. And I don't, I don't have some Amazon affiliate link or anything like that, I swear. Okay, so here's a short physical exercise. And um, it means you have to stand up. And I'm not gonna play this video because I just think we're gonna end up running out of time. But just do this, do this for me if you would. Take my glasses off so they don't fall off. Stand up and pay attention to how your body feels. So just for a second, feel your feet on the floor. Take a couple of breaths. And then stretch up like this. Really, 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 really wide. And see how that feels. And now I want you to bend over and like try to hug your knees. And then when you're ready, you can come back up. I can put my glasses back on so I can see something. So in this video, she uses this as an example of divergent, right? So it feels like wide open and unlimited and all of that. And then, you know, kind of shutting down and, and tightening up um, when you're all squished into yourself like that. So if, I just thought it'd be nice to get up, honestly. So we don't need to watch the video. Don't play video. Okay, so brainstorming is effective for a lot of good things. <laughs> I'm glad you guys like the stretch. Um, obviously lots of ideas. Um, the thing that I think, I'm not gonna read this all to you, you guys can read. Oh, Dosti's up. Um, so this is where I get really distracted. Um, so. Brainstorm is great for a lot of things, but one of the things I, I just love is I've got a, two consultants that I work with. They're my marketing team, the three of us. And we have created this safe space where we can just go into a brainstorming session like that. And Brandon Blair is hilarious. He'll, he leans his head back and his eyes start flipping from one side to the other. And then he says, okay, don't listen to me, but, but, and then he just throws out some harebrained idea. And then Rody, my other guy, we'll just take it and run with it. And suddenly we have my tortoise who is picking fortune cookies. And then I'm telling stories based on the fortune about special districts. Like, where the hell does that come from, right? That's so weird, but, but it's fun and people are enjoying it and they get to see the tortoise because I wanted to cheer people up a little bit, right? So brainstorming is a really good thing. Um, it is, there are rules to it though. And I, I've got somebody on my team, I have to keep resetting because it, he'll call it storm and then um oh, hi amber call it a brainstorm but then um in the middle of people having ideas he keeps coming back and throwing constraints in it you know it's like well yeah but we can't well our staff's small so let's not and it's like you just can't do that when you're brainstorming you really need to keep, create a space where people can be totally nutty totally nutty and safe and throw out names like macaroon or something like that because something will come out of it because it just helps you open up and get so creative. Hi, Amber. Okay, brainstorming don'ts and brainstorming do's. So the first don't is don't judge. So you're not, in fact, a lot of people call it crosstalk or back talk or whatever, but you're not judging ideas at all at this point. So um, the thing that helps is that because people can build off of each other. And like I said, like with Brandon, he comes up with these harebrained ideas. The first idea he had was tarot cards and I'll tell the future of special districts. And I'm like, I don't know how well that's gonna go over. That's a little creepy, right? Like I'm even creeped out by that. But that's the idea. Instead of me saying that, it was like tarot cards, that's crazy. And then Rody's like, or fortune cookies or whatever, right? And the next thing you know, a tortoise got thrown in. So anyway, don't judge. Um, and you don't know where good ideas are gonna come from, right? This is so important. And, and you know, as the project leader, if you're leading a brainstorming session, you might be the one that has to throw out nutty ideas to get people warmed up. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm trying to think of a way to get my, my uh, tortoise on camera for you all, but we'll let them wander around and get warmed up first. 
um, as many new ideas as possible. So if you do an hour, 100 ideas, yeah, it, instantly go to analyzing. I know, Nikki, it's really, really hard. And oh, let me say again, <laughs> another plug for this book. But that's why I love this book is at the end of, he's got what he calls the six senses that you can sharpen to become more creative. And at the end of each, he gives you exercises and ideas of things that you can do to really help yourself get into that space. So anyway, I really like that. But it is, it's really hard. It is so hard not to like, that. Ah, you can't do that. Your brain just does that, right? <clears throat> okay, brainstorming, don't, don't be a butt. So uh, we all know people like this and Nikki, you and I may both be that person. Yeah, yep. And, and I don't do it with everybody. It's mostly with my co-founder. You know, where he'll throw out some wild idea, this is Mac. And I'll go, yeah, but, you know. So we don't want to be a butt. Easy enough to remember, right? Don't want to be a butt. Instead, you really want to be an and. So if they toss out an idea, one of the best tools you can use, and this is a nice thing to try and do, Nikki, even if you're not in a brainstorming session, is to turn yourself into a yes and person. If you can just get that muscle memory of, Somebody goes, you know what I think we should do? We should do a drive through Halloween thing. And you're like, I think that's the dumbest idea ever. You know, instead of saying, well, but, you know, people don't want to, but COVID, right? Which could be everybody's butt right now. You know, but instead, and instead of that, you could say, mm, yeah, that's an interesting idea. And I wonder if people would be comfortable. Maybe they wouldn't, but I wonder if we could, you know, and then you build on it from there. So don't be a butt, be an and. Woohoo. All right. Sloan, mm -hmm. I just wanted to comment that um, I love this. And it reminds me, there's a, there's a really great um, interview with Trevor Noah talking oh. about the, the, just what is it that makes that show so successful that they can crank out these episodes so fast and on topic. I mean, they're literally right. taking things that just occurred and then turning it into a comedy bit. And, and yep. they, do, they do in the interview, Ex everything that you're talking about, it's reminding me of exactly what's happening in those brainstorming sessions with all of the writers. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's really, it, it, um, it's, it's just an ex perfect example of exactly what you're talking about of the ands. And, and he's not, he, as the leader, even the energy when he comes into the room doesn't change. Right. Everybody, the, 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 and if anything, he contributes to that energy, which is exactly to your point. I just wanted to throw that out there. No, I love it. And I'm going to go try and find it now because I just think he's hilarious. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So a couple more don'ts. Don't interrupt. And this is hard, right? I know for me, this is hard. I am probably presenting myself as like the worst person in the room, but I have learned to control some of this through some of this training and stuff that I've been doing over the years. And it's hard once things get popping, right? You talk over each other and you get excited. Even if you're not being a butt, <laughs> if you're being an and, it's still, you have to let people finish their thoughts, right? And listening is as important as speaking. So if you're already thinking of what you're gonna say next, as we all know, and we just heard about this in one of the keynotes, um, you know, if you're already somebody, oh, Landmark Forum calls it already always listening. So you're already formulating your response before somebody's even finished. Um, you might have thought of something totally different if you hadn't been doing that and you were really listening. This is another one that can be hard because when people are getting super creative and the energy is going crazy, it's sometimes hard to stay on track, you know, and not take a left turn and start talking about something else other than your project or what have you. So um, IDEO, you've probably all heard of IDEO, I-D-E-O. They are one, like they're the world leader in design thinking. They get hired by you know, not, not Apple, but you know, they get hired to help create, help teams create products. They get hired to help people create all kinds of things. And they have some great brainstorming resources on their website. That's where I got that little flyer. Um, and then there's, there's a link to all of that on the landing page that I'm gonna send you to at the end. Okay, so now we have, I should have probably put post-its all over my whiteboard. So now we have our, hundred crazy ideas, some of which will be amazing, some of which will be really, truly crazy. And then you start to combine the ones that are similar and narrow down the field. And you start kind of choosing, picking and choosing and figuring out what you want to focus on. Now, if, if there's an idea that you just can't let go of, but it doesn't seem doable, or there's something about it that just doesn't seem like it's going to work, 
you can always do another brainstorm specifically on that one idea, right? I mean, it doesn't have to be an hour or something like that. <sighs> so there's some really cool, now that some of us are all remote, like I am, there's some great online brainstorming tools. I didn't put too many in here just because it's such a long talk, but there's some great ones. I like Miro, Mir Miro. I like, I like the idea of being able to combine sticky notes with pictures or documents and comments and stuff like that. I just thought it was really neat. Lucid Spark is similar, but it's a little less sexy looking, I guess. I don't know, but it's similar. And there are a lot more. You can just, you know, Google is your friend. But this is just, again, this comes from IDEO. Brainstorm, make some choices. You might need to do it a couple of times. Um, with us, it always feels like a big deal when we're brainstorming stuff because it's something like a new product, right? And we're such a small team. It's like we just go through these processes and it was really great. Okay. Hmm. Getting buy-in from the public. So a couple of different things I want to cover. I want to cover the research and anticipating resistance because as we all know, um, not everybody's going to be like super excited about whatever it is you want to spend money on if there's money being spent. Wait until you're ready to present it. This is another one I have a really hard time with. Come up with an idea and I'm like, hey, you guys, I just got the best idea. It's, I'm so excited, you know, and everybody's like, I just, you are wacky. I don't even know what you're talking about. So wait till you're ready to talk about it and then prepare a compelling presentation, which of course will change depending on who you're presenting to. Is it going to be a public hearing? Is it just to your board? Is it just something for your general manager because you want to get them on board? Whatever, whatever. So research. Um, the scope of the project, and, and like we're, we're always looking at things like this because we are a small company and we have to be financially smart and we also have such a small team. So when I look at projects I want to sell my team on, absolutely have to think about the scope. And sometimes like with our developer, I've talked to him to find out how long something may take or what have you, right? And the big picture financial implications to your district, of course, are important. And then how it might look to the public or to the media, um, even if it's an internal project, but somebody found out about it, like how would it look like just thinking about it from every angle. And there are some great research tools. Obviously, you can do surveys, you can use professional polling companies. Has anybody here heard of flash vote? You guys ever seen? So I actually, I like the guy, just full disclosure, I, I like the guy who runs it. He's just a really great guy. And he is so dedicated to democracy. So he and I have that in common and local government. And he's just fantastic. I don't have any kind of partnership with them or anything, but I always bring them up because what they have is amazing. They're a bunch of data geeks. So they help you actually draft your survey questions. And then they have the software to launch the survey into your community and then you can help promote it too. And he says he's just always so surprised by what, what he sees over and over is noisy people complaining at you about whatever you're doing, spending money or parks are too dirty or whatever, right? They're the ones that show up at your meeting and shake their fists at you, right? But when you do these surveys, he says he almost always finds out that they are the few. And so, oops, sorry, I'll leave it here for a second. So um, the surveys typically show a lot more support for special districts and they do, they work with cities too and, and counties, but um, I just, I really like flash vote. They're just great. So just an idea. I don't get a kickback or anything. I need somebody to, I need a manager, I think, manage all these relationships. I can make money off of everything. All right, so anticipate resistance. Now this might even apply internally, right? That's why we do all these why things and everything else. So you can even be thinking about this earlier in the process. If you think the board's gonna be resistant or your GM or what have you, but I had to put it somewhere. So I'm putting this in the public area. Um, so what will the reasons be for resisting? And think about it, every audience you can think of. And, and you may not think of them as audiences, but you know, this is anybody who's getting your message is an audience, right? So if somebody's gonna show up angry at a board meeting, why? What are they gonna be angry about? Stuff like that. And you can even do a brainstorm session focused on this and be ready to address concerns you come up with, right? 
it's kind of a depressing brainstorm, but you can do it in those tools can be really helpful too. Um, pre-mortem, has anybody ever heard of a pre-mortem before? I don't know if you all do this, pre-mortems are awesome. So we do these a lot. Um, I didn't even know I put all the Wikipedia articles up here. It's, it's assume your project will fail miserably. Now you can, you can do this from a couple different angles. You could presume your project is going to fail in terms of getting support, or you can look at it from the point of view of like the Halloween drive through complete disaster. Why? I, you know, we didn't socially distance, we forgot to buy candy, we, you know, whatever, that's a pre-mortem. Like if something's gonna fail, why would it fail? And when you do that, one of the things that I do like about this is it, it breaks possible group thinking, right? So like with us, we all tend to be pretty positive, optimistic people. So we get together and we talk about building a new product and it's like, well, what if nobody wants it? Well, why would nobody want it, right? And so you go through this process of, well, it didn't do what they needed. It didn't have this, it didn't do whatever. And the nice thing about that is that it keeps you from everybody just going, uh-huh, that's a great idea. Uh-huh, I love it, good, go, which they may just be doing because they want to be left alone, I don't know, but it's really a great tool. Okay, this is, this is mine, I just threw this in for me because this is really a little problem I have. Um, if it matters to you, it is worth waiting until you have your thoughts in order you don't necessarily, like every project, you're not going to go do all these other steps necessarily, but at least have your thoughts in order and have your why really clear so that when you're ready, you can actually present it with some heart versus like, it's just another project, you know? Okay. And a compelling presentation. I'm not going to spend time trying to teach you how to do a compelling presentation. Hopefully you all saw the nerdy lady and her lights, camera, action, or whatever that was, that, that was really cool. I actually learned a lot. Okay, but keep in mind that people do absorb information differently. So, you know, I'm not really a good auditory learner, but I'm really good like kinetically and also visually. Like if I read something, I tend to retain it, right? Everybody's different. So depending on what you're, who you're presenting to, just keep that in mind. And printed backups are always good if you, oh, letting people in, Lord, please. All right, cool. And then I am the worst at this, as you've seen, you've seen how many words are on my slides, <laughs> but I'm doing so many things at once. Often they are the PDF that I have to share with people and sometimes they haven't been to my talk. So, so I end up with more words on my slides than I want to. Okay, executing and staying, which sounds very violent, and staying organized. My tortoise is eating breakfast now. Oh, yeah. I should just put tortoise pictures in here. It would have been more fun. So I'm gonna talk about some of the tools that I've used, the project management tools that I've used over the years. Um, there are a lot of them out there, so I'm not at all suggesting that these are the only ones or even that these are the best ones. But since I have used so many, I thought that it might make sense to just go over some of them. So Trello, Trello is kind of great. Um, it's super simple. They have a free version and, you know, they're basically just stacks of these cards, boards with cards on them. Um, so I do, I did like it. We don't use it anymore, um, but we started with that when things were pretty simple. Um, it does start to feel overwhelming. Like this was the one that now is just sitting there that I don't use anymore. <laughs> it just started to feel like a little too much. And we are like, oh, this is gonna have to go somewhere else. Um, this is actually what I use now, Asana. Um, I like it a lot. Um, unfortunately, I am so disorganized that I actually forget to even go use it, but, but this is our current project management tool. So I'm not promising that any of these tools can actually fix a broken project manager because um, I'm just, just a little disorganized, but I really like Asana because you can do folders, you can do projects, you can look at a calendar view or a task view, like it just makes sense to my brain. You can make lists with subtasks and stuff like that. So I like it. This is what I started with way back in the day when I first started working with Mac, I used Basecamp and at the time I loved it. Yeah, I Asana is great and you actually, um, oh Grace, you use Asana nice. Um, 
I like Asada better than Trello for sure. Part of it is just visually I like it better, which for me is just always a big thing. Like I, it's like too much friction if I don't like the way something looks. Speaking of which, Basecamp has gotten so messy to me. They just did a huge upgrade a couple of years ago and I'm just not a fan anymore. I don't like, and it's silly, but I don't like the fonts they use. I don't like how everything looks like it's just equally important. There's just a lot about it that doesn't work for me anymore, but it is like one of the top project management tools in the world. So it's definitely worth taking a look at. And all of these will have free trials if nothing else. Teamwork is what our parent company uses for their website development projects. Now, it's very different for them because what they have is when they build a website for somebody, instead of it being, you know, $50 a month or something like it can be, they're a $50,000 project or a $150,000 project and they take a year or more. And, you know, they just go through all these phases and it's really complex. So teamwork works well for that. Um, and, and it's not, I, it, it, like, it is definitely has more true project management type stuff. Like if you want Gantt charts and all those sorts of things, um, utilization of staff for scheduling and, it does a lot more than that. Um, it, it's, it does a lot. And has anybody here used monday.com? Okay, yeah, I, it, it is the, the latest, greatest, super hot thing on the market. Um, I, um, oh, CSDA uses it, nice, nice. So this is again, it's very, very much really project management, so roadmaps and all this kind of stuff like that, probably more than most districts need, but I have heard it's really good. I have not used this one. So you can talk to Jennifer at CSDA if you want to know more about monday.com. <laughs> okay, I know this has been like, this is such a long talk <laughs> and you guys have been absorbing so much information. Um, this is kind of how I feel right now. So I can't imagine how you're feeling. Um, but the takeaway on the project management stuff is like everybody's got a free trial, right? So just, just my, my one caveat would be, be careful investing too much time into setting up your projects in any one tool if you're gonna try a few, cause then you get kind of married to it, whether you like it or not, cause it's like so much work to, to move, you know? Okay, we're getting there. So anybody else, any other tools that I haven't mentioned that someone has experience with that you'd like to share with us? I saw Trello, Asana, Monday.com, anybody else something you love? Doodle poll, great. Doodle poll's great. I have taken part in many of those. <laughs> we love doodle. Okay, all right, now, moving on. So we're gonna do a recap now in case any of you that aren't on camera are sleeping and have been sleeping this whole time, it's time to wake up, wake up. I'll show you a tortoise here in a minute if you wake up. All right, here's our recap. So some of the difference between project management and leadership, right? I'm not gonna read this again, but it's the get things done versus make things happen. It's, it's the process versus the vision, right? And projects often need both. So I'm not suggesting that project leadership is superior. Well, maybe I kind of am, but anyway, it's like, it's very different. It's a different space, right? And I think some projects, especially if they're important projects, need to start with project leadership before they get managed. I have a lot of resources on our landing page that you all saw already for this. So that the start with why, the TED Talk and the book. Um, and he actually has an online class. I don't know that he leads it, but it's like a two hour class or something. You can pick your date. Um, so. I am going to do a raffle right now for a trivia question. So I want you all to be ready with the everyone chat. Is everybody ready? Because the first person, first person to do this is gonna be, I'm gonna give you a book, whether you want this book or whether you want Start With Why, they're both amazing. And also send you to one of Simon's classes to his class on Start With Why if you'd like, okay? All right, we're gonna do that in just a minute. So brainstorming ideas, some of the stuff we talked about, the do's and don'ts, right? IDEO has some great, great resources and then A Whole New Mind is the book that I talked about. Building public support, getting buy-in, anticipating the public's reaction. We talked about research, I talked about flash vote and how much I really like them. 
and doing the pre-mortem stuff like that. And then all the tools for executing and staying organized. Don't go back to sleep, dude. I need to show you on camera in a minute. Oh, he's in his tub. He has an abalone shell for a bathtub. It's very cute. And you know, for some, you may not need anything more than like, you know, your Microsoft tools or whatever tools you use, your Google tools or something. <sighs> okay. Are we ready? Everybody's ready at chat? Okay. One do and one don't from of brainstorming. Do this, don't do that. Okay, Dawn did it. <laughs> okay, but you guys were listening, look at you. Oh my gosh, okay. You know what? Um, I love you all so much. So I need, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to send me an email right now that just says, send me a book and tell me whether or not you want a whole new mind or start with why, either one. Anybody who emails me, I'm gonna send you a book, okay? And Dawn, I'm also gonna sign you up for that class if you'd like to take it. I hear it's phenomenal. <laughs> Don't judge. You were all listening, I'm so proud. Okay, here's the resources. Putting this up right now and getting a tortoise, hold on. Come here, ghosty. You had a little bath. Oh, now you're a mess. Now you're a mess. Here's my baby tortoise. There's Dosty. Look at his, um, I mean, he's very small. This is how big he is. That's Dosty. He wanders around my desk a little bit. It's pretty cute. <laughs> so he's the one that's been picking fortune cookies for me and everything. He's just, he is so tiny. He's going to get to be about five to eight inches. So he's not going to get huge. But right now he's got, well, he's, I can actually show you this if you want to see. It's going to be weird though, so hopefully I won't make you car sick. So this is his habitat. Um, let's see if I can get an angle that you can see. So he's got a little tub in the corner. He's got a thing to climb on. He's got a ramp. He really likes all of that. I know the Skull Cove. And then my entire desk has, um, I should have shown you that too, except it's a mess, it has um, soundproofing all the way around it so he can't fall off and he just wanders my desk. And then he has another house out front for the weekends, right? Because I don't want him to get lonely on the weekends. And then he has an outdoor house that he sits in to get in the sun. So spoiled, so, so spoiled. So that's everything I have for you all today. Do you have any questions? Do you want to unmute and say hi? Do you just want to like go have a bio break and then go for lunch? Come on, little dude. This is awesome. fantastic. A fantastic Sloan, as oh, always. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Thank you, Sloan. And we all over here love you and miss you. Oh, I miss you guys too. Thank you all so much for being so kind and for showing up and for liking my tortoise. He's just pretty cool. <laughs> I wish there was a better way to show him. Sometimes I join my own meetings from my phone. And he's got his own Zoom account and he, all my employees want to watch him all the time. <laughs> he is pretty cool. All right, you all. Well, thank you Fantastic. so much for spending time with me. Yes, and everyone, thank you um, for spending time with me as well. And just as a note, um, this session recording will be available um, in the returning recording section of the conference app along with all of the other sessions uh, that you've had access to throughout the week. So you have access to those through November the 13th. So as great as this was, you can go back and watch it as many times as you would like. <laughs> So with um, and with that, please go grab your lunch and um, get rested up for some uh, some legal questioning at one o'clock. Um, and um, and we look forward to uh, seeing you then, and hopefully seeing you in person soon. He likes to get himself.
I don't know if you can see him down here. You are so funny. All right. One little short tortoise video. Go, Dosty, go. This is his ramp on my desk. <laughs> I literally am obsessed with this little. He is pretty cute. All right, come here, guys. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Okay. All right. Well, I will let you all go. It's going to be the most awkward recording ever, but whatever. <laughs> you got a tortoise. It's worth it. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. It's so good to see you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.